Greetings, good day, happy Friday. Hi everybody, my name is Kimberly Wright. Welcome to Hand Built Pottery. It's Friday, October 22nd, 2021. All right, if you want to get a pen and paper to jot down any of these uh, topics, which are holidays and events for today, they might possibly be of some use to you. Maybe you want to research them just for your own education or possibly use them for a DIY or some type of project that you have, some creative project that you have going on. All right. So today is National Nut Day. Smart is Cool Day. International Caps Lock Day. National Color Day an international stuttering awareness day. And so I want to look at the one about national color since we're all about art. National color day gives you a chance to stop and reflect on the relationship we share with the colors that surround us and the innumerable ways in which they impact us. How long has it been since you stopped by a garden to admire a yellow sunflower? or gaze at the deep blue sky. We invite you to celebrate the power of colors today. So that's really interesting. What is the most unpopular color? Anybody know what's the most unpopular, unpopular color? Yellow? Yeah. How did you know that? It's yellow. It is the most unpopular color and it has a fan base of about 5%. And why do people see colors different? The rods and cones, the two types of cells inside the human eye determine what color we see. Wavelengths of a color matter as much as our own absorption of it because 90% of the color we interpret is based on our memory. All right. Blue is the warmest color. According to the study, blue is the world's most popular color with 40% of people picking it as their favorite. Red comes first. Red is the first color that an infant can see as it has the longest wavelength. Hate, you, if you hate stress, think pink. The color pink relieves anxiety and stress because of its calming effect and palliative uh, qualities. Cold green for rest and yellow for panic. Fixing your gaze on the color yellow can cause nausea whereas staring at green colors can calm your mind. And bulls hate red. Well, that's a lie. Bulls can't even recognize the color red, let alone be triggered by it. It's the movement of the muleta that angers them. All right. So do something to celebrate colors today. Be creative, look at, gaze at something beautiful and colorful and move right along. All right, so we were on our last day of our uh, basket designs for our uh, hot air balloons. And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, finish these two pieces here. So first thing I wanna do is get a piece of newspaper I want to finish the square that goes on top of this particular basket right here. So I have to move it really slowly because my holes that are, are gonna be holding up the actual balloon I'm trying to get them to leather, so. 
I have to continue to look at this throughout the day to make sure it's still straight up. It's not moving as it's drying. And so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna have this bracket up here to kind of secure it. And that's gonna be where my, um, that is gonna be the area where my, uh, the propane hits the gas, the gas goes up into the balloon area. So that has a particular part. I was looking for my uh, paper that I was working from for some reason. Uh, let's see. Oh, yes, I see it. Okay. Sorry, young people. Thanks for being patient. Yes, sorry. So you all saw yesterday the propane tanks I had inside the basket and this particular bracket I'm gonna create is really gonna hold the burners, the burners that lift the gas or the fire up to the envelope or the, uh, the balloon. And so right here, bracket and all of this stuff is like really delicate. So I've already measured how it's supposed to look. And that's what I'm gonna be putting together right now. Anybody uh, started on there? I mean, I know Miss uh, Diana Williams showed me her basket. Anybody else starting, uh, anybody else? You don't have to say if you started on the basket. Anybody else going to make a uh, hot air balloon? I have started on mine. Okay, cool. Well, I draw my picture, so I haven't started yet. I did do the picture. Oh, you draw? You drew a picture of uh, what you're going to do? Yes, I haven't. I haven't designed the top of it yet of the balloon itself. But I'm sure when I draw. Okay. You have your drawing. Did she say she was showing us? Elephant, but I wasn't for sure on how to do Hold it. Hold on, let's see. Hold on, let's see. Okay. You gotta you put it? it a little closer. Put it a little closer so I can see the balloon part. Okay. Oh, okay. The top part will be, I'm giving designs on the top part. Because mm -hmm. I want to do an elephant, because I saw mm -hmm. different pictures. So it's just a round balloon itself. You I mean you want, to, you want your balloon to be in the shape of an elephant, or you actually want yeah. your I, a picture of an I elephant? I wanted it. to, but I didn't know how to do it. So I went ahead and did the circle. And I, I'm going to put some like um the breast awareness in the middle. Uh -huh. And then do the flowers, the pink flowers, something on the top. So I think I just go that route, but that's this my balloon. But if you want to do an elephant too, once you have your balloon completely fired, you can uh, have a picture of an elephant and trace it on there. Oh, okay. But I so wanted to be, I wanted so to be I'll make sure, since I have two balloons, I'll make sure to do a tracing of an image on my balloon when it's time to do that design. So if anybody wants to do something like that, you'll know how to do it. Oh, okay. That'll help. Thank you. No problem. <laughs> but that drawing looks really nice. Are you going to uh, color it and stuff when you finish your yeah. actual balloon? Yes, I'm going to do designs on it. And I'm going to go back. I got some wood pieces I had bought from Amazon. Different uh -huh. type of wood design. I was going to roll it on the bottom of my basket. Okay. But, uh, that's all I came up with so far. And I do that's have really stencils good. I was gonna put on the, on the bottom of them. Okay, that's really good. You mean you're gonna stencil what kind of, what kind of stencils? Like flowers or something? You said something about flowers and breast cancer. Uh, yeah, it's a different design like ribbons. And um, it was just some stuff I bought from the Dollar Tree. Okay. I, I haven't decided yet, but um, I'm up and about. Can you see me? 
These are my stencils I bought from the Dollar Tree. I got the, the um oh yeah, feathers. Feathers. I got butterflies. And then I got different designs I can put around the balloon itself. See the different shapes? Yeah, that looks nice. So I so more like I probably go with this one and pick out some a design on it. And you can put that stencil right on your balloon and just paint your design on it just like that. Uh, okay. Yeah. It looks good. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> all right. So coming back to the square, it's almost. Take magic. the camera off me. <laughs> it's all right. I'm oh, going back. <laughs> I'm eating breakfast. <laughs> it's all right. It's no problem. So as I'm walk, talking, uh, going along, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'm going to go ahead and brush this piece around it, the bracket. And this is going to sit on top of here. But I want to make sure that I'm completely finished with this particular piece before I actually sit it up there because I don't want to have to move it anymore. And so what I'm going to do now is flip this over just by picking up the paper and kind of just peeling it up flipping it over and making sure that it's brushed and nice and smooth on the other side. But I do want to scrape, uh, sorry, score or scratch where I see uh, some of the joints a little bit open. And, and since uh, I'm already working on this just to give it the time, the proper time to dry, I might as well go ahead and make the burners to go on it. Now, once again, trust me, just because I'm making all of these details very, like really miniature details, like the propane tank, the seats and all this good stuff. If you don't decide to go that route, it's no problem. As long as you make your basket and the actual uh, balloon, I'm sure your piece will be just as beautiful as mine because it's all about the hot air balloon anyway and the color. So you can go simple or really detailed. I'm flipping this over again and barely get it off the paper. And what I wanna do is like flip my paper over to the clean side and I'm going to, uh, the top side of the piece, I'm gonna have that down on the bottom. And I'm just gonna brush that one more time. And plus, even before I sit that up there, I wanna, so it won't sink on these areas here in between, I want to let that leather get a little drier and harder. However, uh, I am gonna set more tissue paper towel in between there to hold it up so it can be as a prop. So I won't even have to worry about it falling. All right, young people, next week, don't forget that we will be making the, uh, we'll start on the balloon. That's going to take several classes. It's not like just an easy fix, so don't worry. All right. I'm going to be making the burners right now. I just rolled a piece of clay and I'm going to just kind of flatten it out like so. Mm. One second, young people. All right. So I don't want to make that too thin, but thin enough to look natural. And I'm just going to go ahead and cut this across with the ruler to 
to make it even on the sides. And as I'm looking at the center of the bracket or the square over there, if I put this in the center, it's gonna take away all of my open space where people can see up in the balloon out. So I want to cut it down a bit. That's what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it about right there. I think that's gonna be good. So I'm just like eyeballing this stuff. Yep. So I'm just looking, I'm showing you here. Center of this square here. This is gonna fit like so. All right. So let me just go ahead and measure that out. And that's gonna go. Right, I think I should fit it right in the center of it instead of layering it on the top. I'm going to try that and see how it works out. And then I'm going to make my burners and put that on there. And so all I have to do is sit this here. I have a little bit of overage to actually make sure it's attaching properly, making sure that it's even. And then I'm just going to go ahead and Score that down. On each side. So even though I'm making all these little detailed things, it just takes a little bit of time, but you know, if you have the time, then you can get the uh, look that you want. It's not that much. And if you get tired, you know, in between, you know, just do it in steps, just like you see me doing. All right, I'm cleaning my brush so I can kind of clean that corner right there, here. And when you're working with things that are really small miniature, I try to do as less work as I possibly can, like handling it. That's why you see it really sitting here. You don't see me picking it up too many times or anything like that because the stuff is really delicate. All right. So those are my burner. That's my burner bracket. And now I'm gonna make my burner holes. So I'm gonna get a hole puncher about the size that I want the uh, burners to be. I think right here, Let's see, we're gonna do about two, one, and two. All right, so even though I didn't get the hole puncher, what I'm gonna do is cut this out. These two holes. And you see this little button or whatever, I'm just gonna put that to the side in case I wanna use it for something. All right, here's my other burner opening or hole. Gently pick this piece up in case I wanna use it. Looks really interesting. All right, I went a little bit close to the edge on that second hole right there, but it's okay. And what I'm gonna do now is this strip that was like a scrap is going to just actually be my uh, burner, the compartment for that. But what I'm going to do is open it up just a bit more, which is kind of like tricky because it's so thin. So what I'm doing is just kind of like letting it roll on there without adding pressure. All right. So instead of putting my finger up, I'm going to pick the cloth up, pick the piece up, and I'm going to measure one piece to go around the burner, and then I'll be able to see how much I need for the second one. OK. 
Okay, that looks about good. I'm gonna make a mark here where I turn the circle, so to speak. And then I'm gonna gently open it back up so it doesn't break. Cut that piece. And then the piece that I actually cut, I'm going to get it and measure this piece exactly like that. All right, and so what I'm going to do is basically just kind of turn these right off the piece. And once I get to the edges right here, I'm just going to add a scratch just gently and a little bit of snip. Bring those edges together, just like that. And then I'm just gonna scratch around the top base of the openings for the burners, put a little slip there and add my burner duct. All right, I'm gonna add the second one and then show you how that looks. So the same thing, I have to gently turn this. Taking my time so it won't break because it's already been drying. Small and thin, it's gonna dry with the air. I put slip on it. I'm bringing the edges close together. Smoothing with my finger a bit, making sure the circle looks good. And then once again, scratching around the top edge of the other side of the whole area. And I'm gonna add a bit of slip, just a bit. I'm adding some back around the top of that piece, meaning going around the edge again as well. Just reinforcing it. All right. And so if I, since the piece is too delicate, I can't get my finger in there to open up the circle. I'm just gonna use this tool. Just press down a bit on the top edge to make sure that I'm actually pressing it down into the surface of the piece. I'm gonna brush around there just a bit. And this is how this piece pretty much looks. see down through the holes of the duct. And that's gonna sit upside down where the ducts are hanging down over this piece right here. So I'm gonna have to let it leather a little bit more. And for these two little pieces that I said I could do something with, what I'm going to do is place the two pieces and they kind of look like little knobs to me. I'm going to do uh, put them um, on the side right here on each piece so that they will look like knobs to turn on the actual burners. So I just came up with that right as we were working. All right. This is one side of the knob and burner. I have to get a tool to press that down because my finger cannot, my finger cannot fit in that little space. And then I'm gonna get that other knob. Yes, ma'am, and put it on the other side. Yes, ma'am. Uh, while you're waiting, while you're waiting for that to settle. Um... It's just an idea that you take your paper and, and build it up inside so you, those um, holes will keep turning in. You can build it up. Build talking, the paper. About, talking about the paper here? Yeah, put more paper in there to keep the holes standing up. Miss Etheria, that's what I said to the class not too long ago. I said I'm going to add more paper in here so that those the parts of the bracket don't fall down or whatever, but I just mm -hmm. hadn't got to that. Well, I, I, didn't, I didn't know I was saying something wrong, but I, I, I answered the telephone. I must have missed it. Uh -uh. You ain't saying nothing wrong. I'm just saying 
I did just say that a few minutes ago that I'm going to add more paper in there. It's okay. It's no problem. All right. So young people, while this is drying, what I have going for me, I am going to put more paper in the Mr. Theory, but I don't even have to do that now because I'm moving right along to my next piece. And this is how that piece looks, sorry, with the knobs to turn the burners up, down, or whatever. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and get this other basket and work on it while I'm waiting on that piece to dry. And we'll just do this for a couple of minutes before we conclude class. And I'll be finished. I'm not going to wrap these up again because they're too delicate with the, the poles and everything to wrap them up. So uh, next class, those things will be dried, either uh, greenware or completely fired. It depends on how they fall in with the next uh, firing schedule. So here, um, no, I can go ahead, love. Your burners are going to face down. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. So um, I had I had to I had to build it like that where it could dry, so the burners could be up. But when I put it on the thing, I'm turning the burners down. Yeah, I'm just okay. waiting. On it to, I'm just waiting on it to leather a little bit so it can get a little bit harder and sturdier. Even though I'm going to put the prop like Miss Etheria saying. So on the I'm not even going to pick that smaller one up, but on the smaller one, I've, I've, uh, I can turn it. You can see I've carved out where the opening is of the, uh, the basket. Uh, this is where people enter, and I'm, even though it has the handle there to actually pull the basket down, I'm going to put an actual door handle right there. And so right here as well, I have a door where those two lines are. So the reason why I'm just saying that is because I'm going to scratch around the edge of the basket. I'm dipping my uh, I'm dipping my fan tool in water to just kind of re-moisten the edge, even though it's not like completely dry, but it has leathered and stiffened up a lot because I want to add the same rope look or design on this top edge. And that'll give my, uh, the poles that, or the leather straps that actually hold the basket up to the balloon, that will give that some wear to uh, some more stability for the poles to stand up. And I've already pre-made these they look a little different than my other poles, as you can see them in the back. And this one has this type of hole. The other poles in the back have just like a smaller hole. I just wanted to kind of still have them different. And so I'm just moving those to the side. I'm going to roll a coil to make that rope. And even uh, I'm making the my basket and uh, to be like politically correct or something. If your basket, if your um, hot air balloon was gonna be having a thing like candy, maybe instead of putting seats and uh, different things like you saw that I had, maybe you have an imagination and make it uh, whimsical or, you know, make it something out of this world that people wouldn't even think of. It doesn't have to be politically correct, so to speak. All right, so I'm just kind of cutting that in half because the spacing on the counter is getting a little bit uh, sparse, getting it thinner. Give me one second, young people. And I've showed you all how to uh, roll the clay to make it twist will kind of look like a rope. First of all, you have to learn how to make a coil evenly and be able to roll the coil so thin without it cracking up and getting so dry. So that means you have to learn about the moisture of the clay, so to speak. 
And so even though I know that it's gonna be a little bit thick, I'm just gonna go ahead and use this piece to be my uh, rope. I think I wanted to do one clean spray over that. So I'm looping that over, turn it to be like a long U. I'm gonna push it close together and start to roll the piece my way, uh, sorry, toward me on one end and away from me on the other end. So now it's getting stuck to the table because I sprayed that water. So let me wipe that water up. All right, and so since that broke, I'm gonna have to use this piece and I'll bring that, I'll use that piece as well. So I'm rolling this piece toward me that piece away. I'm going to connect that little piece that just broke. Still looks good. Any part that doesn't look good, all I have to do is uh, cut that off. Like, actually, I don't like that whole end, so I'm just going to trash that and just keep this piece, which is good. And then I'm going to go ahead and use that second little piece that broke and roll a little bit more. And so if I have the time to work, especially while I'm at work, even I, I work sometimes uh, while I'm just at home, not at work for the day, um, if I have the particular time, I'm going to go ahead and take my time so that I can make sure all of these delicate components can get done properly. And if I have to rush, I just kind of tell myself uh, it's best not to do the work at that time. All right, so I'm getting the basket just to see how much rope of coil we have. I'm taking the slip. And I'm not going to add the coil. The reason why I talked about the door is because I'm not going to add that rope where the door is. On the, you might not be able to see it because of the tissue on the small basket, but I added rope around the top edge of that, but I did not add it around the door. Just adding a nice light layer of slip there. And then I'm going to start to just kind of put the rope there slowly, squeezing and pressing as I go because it's gonna stretch as you go and you wanna make sure you're doing all that. Twisting the, the rope if it needs to be tighter as I go, sometimes in turn I twist to make sure the piece is staying as tight as possible. Making sure to uh, take my time and go around the edges in a block style. As you can see, that's where it ended. So I'm gonna get that other piece, just kind of turn it and add it where it looks natural. Try to make that same chiseled corner here with my fingers, turn and actually that was enough rope for the whole piece. I'm so happy about that because once again, I'm not going uh, around the door area. I want the door area to stay smooth. And so I'm just pressing with my fingers to make sure it's kind of pressing onto the slip area or the score area because I'm not gonna um, do any scratching to that. I'm just basically gonna um, I'm basically just gonna brush around that to seal it. So it's gonna be like a light sealer. And right now I wanna put a couple of indentations where I'm going to add my poles. And of course my door, I'm just taking into a, a consideration where things are. So since my door opens right here, I don't wanna have a pole right here. I'm probably gonna have them on each corner. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take the smallest brush I can. I think I have that I, know that could fit on the ledge or edge of my basket. And then I'm actually making a hole gently, but then turning it so that I can 
make an opening on top of the rope where the uh, actual pole of the uh, leather strap will sit. And then this is the last one. Open it up. This is how that looks. And so what I'm gonna do now is add liquid water slip like in each of those areas. And then I'm gonna take oh. And place them in those areas. And before I do that as well, I'm looking at the pieces to see which two are similar and whichever two are similar, I'm gonna use those to put across from each other. So this one looks, and then I have to see how I want, okay. Yeah, so how I want the holes to turn out as well. As I place the pole into the hole, I'm kind of just where I opened up the hole, so to speak. I'm kind of just taking my fingers and gently pressing the clay around the edge of it at, and at, give it a little bit of pressure too so I can make sure it's stuck down in there, but make sure it's like set in tight, so to speak. And you know, you have to be careful as you turn it, making sure you looking at it, making sure it's staying straight up every angle that I turn it as it dries for the day, I just make sure to look at it and see how it's doing. So this is my second piece going right diagonally across from it and making sure that it looks kind of like the same and level, pressing down a bit. As you can see, I'm just using my hands now, not even any tools. So Kim, what are the holes on the pole for? That is where my string is gonna go. My I might use jute twine or string to hold the balloon. To, the this is gonna connect the balloon to the basket. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's gonna be hanging from the ceiling. Remember, you was asking me that last class. How was I gonna get all that up together? So I was saying that eventually I'm gonna show you. Yes. Yeah. And so right now, once again, I'm pressing gently pressing that open clay wet where the hole was around and kind of smoothing too to try to make that look like one in that area now even though i'm just using the clay that i had if it didn't seem strong to me i can get a little i can get a little coil and add another piece around it to reinforce it if i felt like i needed to and I didn't feel like I needed a piece all the way around it, but it felt a little shallow right here in the front of it. So I just added a little bit of clay right there in the front. And so far, so good. As you working on, as I put one up, when I go towards my second one and third one, if anything starts to fall down, that means maybe my plan is not going as well or it's a little flimsy, so I need to figure out something else. But as you can see, nothing has fell down. So that means it probably is a good way to, you know, get this thing going. And I'm on my fourth one. Just going to go ahead and gently swivel that down in there and start to press the clay around it. I feel a little shallow part right there. So I'm adding a little piece of clay right here. And it's so much moisture there from the slip already that I don't need to add water. I just added that piece of clay and started to smooth it in. And so I'll give you a closer. I'm going to put a little, reinforce a little bit of piece in the front as well, just to make sure that that area is strong. Now, you know, once this completely dries or whatever, it'll be totally strong. So it's not like I'm going to have to worry about anything breaking or coming apart. I'm really excited about these balloons. I've always wanted to make a hot air balloon since I've been doing artwork since I was three years old. So this is a good thing you all have 
inspired me. We're doing it together. I see one of my poles is like higher than the other one. So what I'm going to do is just kind of wiggle that, try to push it down a bit. And I'm going to get a little piece. I see I need to reinforce that just to make it a little stronger. And I think I add just a little piece right there. So for this same piece, I'm gonna make another bracket. I was wondering was I, I actually wanted to make the, the burners for the larger piece being that it, it's large enough to be able to make small enough details to see, not even just realizing that I just made that bracket for my smaller basket, but I might leave the burners off of this one or I might just go ahead and make them anyway. So I am gonna make the bracket because that will help that to um, be a little bit more sturdy and dry. But as you can see, I'm gonna give you the close up just around those uh, parts. Right around the edges of the poles. So, to the inside. I know y'all thinking y'all about to take flight with it, but that's it. All right. So, I'm, I'm just going to slide this just to see how the piece is moving, per se. To see if it's like falling down or over. And it stayed up pretty sturdy. So, all of, once again, I'm going to be here today until about four o'clock, all I have to do is continue to like pieces and make sure that uh, everything is drying and staying up the way that I want it. So I'm gonna be making another bracket like this for this piece. And you know, I thought that would be really neat. It just came to me. Since this basket right here is round, I've made a square, uh, bracket with the burners in it. I'm gonna keep that one, but this piece is square. What I'm gonna do is make a round bracket for this particular piece. So it's gonna be a square with a round bracket and that's a round one with a square, a round basket with a square bracket. So that'll be something to challenge me, uh, make me be a little bit creative. All right. So is there anybody in class that was not here yesterday? Somebody got their hand raised. Is everybody in class today the same people that were in class yesterday? Is there anybody in new class? Is there some sorry? Is there about anybody in class new today? Is Miss Karen raising her hand? You said yes. Oh, okay. So you was not here yesterday. All right. So on, on next uh, week, Friday, which will be October the 29th, it's the, the last Friday before Halloween. Um, we are having our fall fun festival. Uh, you should have received a email in your, a flyer in your email about the how, uh, we call our festival instead of Halloween because as senior citizens, we don't celebrate Halloween for whatever reason. Uh, we're just not into that. We celebrate the seasons changing, fall and autumn and that type of thing. So uh, every year we have a pumpkin decorating contest and we're not doing the pumpkin decorating contest this year. We're actually going to be decorating masks. So we're asking you to get any type of mask you like you can get these disposable masks, what I have gotten, and uh, decorate them. And we're gonna show and share them in the class. But as you can see, these masks have a white side and a blue side. And since the white side is more of a clean palette, this is the side that I actually uh, decorated. And so you want to be mindful of not using things that you wouldn't want to throw away because these masks are still supposed to be disposable. So the masks that I decorated, I used things that were something that I had like extra 
scraps of cloth, that type of thing. So it's not too much. I won't feel bad once I have to dispose or throw these away. So these are just demonstrations to inspire you all, encourage you all to make some beautiful masks. If you want to at least make one, that will be great for us to, for you to show everybody uh, during that event, which will be next Friday at 10 a.m. on Maletta Clayton's Buffy's uh, link. And um, mine will not be displayed. Uh, sorry, they will not be shown during the, uh, maybe they will. It depends on Miss Buffy asks me. But it's all about you all, the seniors. So we'll be showing and sharing your pieces. And mine is just to encourage you during class to get her done. So I'm about to show you the ones that I've created. Once again, I showed them yesterday. And so I don't have a problem with showing them today to anybody who may have not gotten a chance to actually see them. I'm going to show you the planner ones first. This is one I thought would be cool to for a man to wear. All right, this is a piece I thought would be cool for a lady to wear, anybody really. All right, look at Miss Diana. <laughs> this is a piece that I, and not only that, as you're showing your pieces, it is a beautiful piece of artwork, if you want to say, this is a piece I created and it, it's titled, you might give it a title since you're an artist, you know, to be different from somebody else. Because I'm sure people are not going to be naming their pieces, but this is called Kim the Clown. <laughs> oh, Lordy. Don't you say nothing, Miss Etheria. <laughs> this is for my Delta sisters, which I'm not a, I'm not a sister in a sorority. I just said that. You can see, I've tried to show you some that were plain that I just use marker on. These have glitter included. So it's all sorts of ways that you can go. You just gotta be creative as it pertains to using uh, materials to decorate these things. This is one I did with tool and uh, feathers. Maybe it's on the wrong side or something. Maybe not, because I can't even see on that side. <laughs> I know I look mysterious. All right, so that's that piece. Still a little different. And I was telling everybody yesterday that I had got an idea of doing some pieces that look gypsy or genie-ish. And these are those pieces here. I don't really want to touch my face or anything in case somebody wants to have these. Uh, this is one that I really love. It's gold and sheer, it could be good for a wedding. And I have the edges scalloped with uh, rhinestones on them. This is my last two that I created. This is silver and pink. This is the bottom. It's kind of going down into a V shape. And this is how the back looks. So once again, I was telling everybody yesterday, these are no so uh, creations. I actually have just been using ribbon and material and whatever and hot gluing these things directly right onto the mask. And this is my last one. Of course it curves like this once you really put it on. All right. So that's it. That event is next Friday, October the 29th at 10 a.m. Um, and classes will be canceled, except for probably the cat classes that are after the event. But however, we will not be having pottery next Friday. And uh, next week on uh, October the 27th, I want to say I have, yep, Wednesday, October 27th, I have Ms. Gwendolyn Alexander going to be the next participant to come to the facility to work for 30 minutes. And um, 
I will have a, a firing schedule next week. So if you have anything that you want to drop off or pick up, please let me know. All you have to do is call me, email me, or just come to the Darnell facility. And last but not least, last announcement, young people. All right, today we are having, hmm, I guess I deleted my menu somehow. I know we're having fried whiting, a lemon pepper, something, catfish we're having uh collard greens and we're going to be having broccoli and rice casserole with uh cornbread and rolls and desserts and drinks and water so that's all for today these uh either these baskets will be fired next class or they will be completely dried like greenware so next class, we will be moving right on along towards to our uh, balloons or our envelopes. And if you have missed any uh, instruction that you may need for the baskets, you are more than welcome to look at those videos on YouTube. Anybody have any questions, suggestions, or concerns? Anybody? Uh, I can't remember, yes, I have a suggestion. Yes, ma'am. Um. Sometimes when you go on YouTube, uh, well, my suggestion is maybe you can uh, have uh, demos, or I mean, not demos, but when you ask people if they have anything they want to show, maybe you can hold that to the end of the class because when I go back to YouTube, I have to watch all of that before I watch what I'm trying to see on YouTube. I understand. Okay. Let's get the suggestion. No, no, I understand. Thank you so much. Okay, so uh, that's a good suggestion. Thank you so much. And plus, um, okay. I understand as far as the flow of it, yeah, you want to go through the whole lesson first and then keep that in. No problem. All right, so I hope you all, all have enjoyed uh, me showing you how to possibly, you know, just because I did one thing, hey, I'm an artist in my own skin and right you please uh thrill us fascinate us amaze us by what you have to offer in your creativity with your baskets and um just let us see what you can do i mean you might you might get so crazy as to say that you're making a basket for cats so your basket could have all kind of holes where cats go through and cat scratchers and you know like just be creative you know like a whimsical thing, if you was watching a really adventurous type of movie, like uh, Alice in Wonderland or Dr. Seuss Cat in the Hat, you know, they, there are aspects and things about those movies that may seem like they're not real or true, but it's all about the imagination. So as long as you're able to explain what you uh, wanted to put out as an artist, then it will be accepted. It's your own creativity, and we would love to see what you have to offer. So thanks again. My name is Kimberly Wright. Thanks for joining Hand Up Pottery. I will see you all next week. Have a wonderful, safe, and blessed week and weekend. Sorry. Peace. Thank you, you so much. Wonderful class, Kimmy. Thank you so yes, much. It is. Thank y'all. Y'all have, have a great weekend. You too. You, you too. too. Miss Regina, let me have some of that gum. <laughs> it's good too, Kim. It's good too. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs>